Awesome. Hello. Hi, everyone. So um, I'm going to give my talk on building a wearable camera. Um, just to manage expectations, this isn't like a product or a startup or anything. This is just a Raspberry Pi strapped to my back. Uh, so a couple months ago, I got a narrative clip, which I've wanted for a very long time, but they're pretty pricey and things like that. And basically what it is, is just a, a clip that you wear on a shirt or something. And every 30 seconds, it takes a picture. And it's a way of effectively life logging your life. Um, I took it on a very short holiday, and it looked really nice. Um, it was still like it gave me enough information to know that there's obviously a, like a lot of potential in doing something cool like this. However, every single picture was wonky, which was interesting. Um, also, all my pictures were hidden behind this really badly designed web app that would like Ajaxy load things, and I couldn't download all the images at the same time and stuff like that. So I thought, well. There really isn't anything out there that kind of solves this problem. There's not, there's nothing that really. Go away. Um, there, there's like, there's not really enough out there that uh, solves this problem. And I was planning on going another holiday, and we were going to do, but I think it was like four countries in five days. So I wanted to make sure I remembered as much as possible. So what I did is I went about. Oh, I started off thinking, well, that kind of sucks because we've gone so far with computers, we surely must be able to solve a problem like this, especially because so many people have effectively tried. So the Raspberry Pi is pretty awesome, and it's really cheap, and like all of us, we have about 10 of them sitting at home. Uh, and it also comes with a camera module, which works perfectly fine, it's all open source, and yeah, it's great. So I thought, well, what if I could get the same kind of experience that I had with the narrative clip, but also fix the whole wonky issue and build it myself? <laughs> so I thought, well, what if we put it on the strap of a backpack? So that's exactly what I tried doing. So I got the Raspberry Pi with the camera module, and I stabbed a hole in the lower chest part, and I added the camera module there, and then I just ran a strap all the way back up my shoulder and back into a backpack, and then just clamped it there just to test things. Um, and it effectively worked. It worked really well, actually. So um, that's what it ended up looking like. Uh, so it's nice and discreet. It is just a raw, like, ugly electronics board sewed to a backpack. Um, and it was amazingly, like, waterproof. Um, it did its job. Um, I managed to sew straight through it, like, twice, and nothing happened. So, <laughs> so that's the thing. Um, <laughs> And at this stage, I was like, okay, that's cool. So I've solved a problem, and that's pretty awesome. But it was also pretty easy, because I was just doing it in my spare time every now and then. So I thought, well, how can I fix this whole ugly issue of the fact that the way the wearable cameras work is you want to take a time lapse, but 90% of those images are going to be pretty awful, because you're doing either mundane stuff, or you're jumping around, you're moving too fast, and you're not going to get the pictures that you want. Um, I mean, a great example was the narrative clip. So this is... 11.30 on a Tuesday, I was at work, and it just took a time lapse of my bedroom. Like, nothing happened at all. <laughs> um, so I thought, well, the Raspberry Pi has a... Uh, Raspberry Pi 3 has a Wi-Fi chip in it now. And Wi-Fi chips you can use as AP mode, so access point mode. So what I did was I hosted a Wi-Fi network on the device, and then it would show me the pictures that it was taking. And then I just made a really simple, dumb, like, flask app that did this for me. And I could hit the little X button on my phone, and that way I can delete images as I'm walking around on holiday. Um, a nice part of this also was that I, I knew RTCs were a thing, so real-time clocks. And they're basically the little thing inside there's a little battery thing inside computers, I'm sure you guys know, but I didn't know about the Raspberry Pi. So the Raspberry Pi doesn't have an RTC, which means it has no real concept of what time is. So what I did was, I, I knew it'd be a problem, so I, made, I had a server time, which is what the Raspberry Pi thought the time was, and then I had a JavaScript timestamp, which was what my phone like generated and figured out. And I thought, as a holiday progresses, I'll probably see those numbers vary slightly, um, but that, that wasn't the case at all. It was completely off. <laughs> so... At this stage, I was kind of jumping around and I thought, right, what else can I do? So I thought, well, Google Maps has my location of where I go, like, all the time. And I thought, well, if I could somehow fit it in with this project, I could have a time-lapse video of me on holiday as well as the GPS coordinates of that as well, and that would be really cool. Um, and I have this thing lying around, which is a fantastic piece of kit. I don't know why this isn't advertised. So it's a Linkit one. It's made by... MediaTek. It's about sixty pounds, and it's effectively an Arduino Uno, but it's got G, it's got GPS, GSM, SD, like everything, um, and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Yeah. And I taped it all together, put it in a little like carry case, and thought, right, I'll be great. 
I'd be great for going on holiday. Um, at that point, I had way too many things going on. So I had the web app, I had the, the hardware thing going on, as well as uh, the GPS stuff. And the issue with the GPS as well is it's either like 100% absolutely perfect or just completely wrong and puts you nowhere. So that was a pretty hard thing to do, especially when trying to figure out, well, do I add the, do I do a type, do I make like, like, do I use Python to take a picture and have it blocking code until it finds GPS? And what happens if it doesn't find GPS in certain places? So I wasn't really sure. So I ended up leaving the um, thing out because I thought I'm just building a universal box of nothing. Um, and ended up just having the Raspberry Pi on its own with the camera con camera module connected, and that's it. No craziness. And this is the final result. So this is four days of us going around. Um, it still has the same kind of numbers, so it's still about 90% of the images are pretty awful, like that on the floor, and pictures of people's arms and things. However, it's, it's enough to actually remember so much. You can <clears throat> remember exactly what we did, where we ate, where we went, and all that kind of stuff. So it was, it was like definitely worth a shot. Um, and it took a bunch of great pictures. Of course, some were wonky, plenty were blurred, and things like that. Um, I did look into doing some funky OpenCV stuff, so there's like histo histogram equalization, um, which is amazing. I didn't even know this stuff existed. Um, I didn't bother putting this into the time lapse, but it would definitely improve things. Um, and before I played the video, uh, Google said, oh, YouTube said, hey, do you want to optimize it? So I thought, yeah, sure. And this is what I ended up with. <laughs> <laughs> and that's about it. Yep. Thanks. <laughs> um, I can take questions if you have any. Hmm? Oh. Who says, do you want to optimize the lighting? Who was that? Oh, do I want to optimize the lighting using the histogram stuff? Yeah. Um, I would have. Um, the only thing is also the histogram equalization is more for black and white images. So it's fantastic for that. But when you have color, it's, it, it gets a bit ugly. So you have to do all kinds of different things of trying to figure out, is a color black and white enough for me to try and optimize and things like that? Yeah. Oh, this thing. That's YouTube. So that's YouTube saying, hey, let's optimize your video because it's a time lapse. And yeah. It's really freaky. <laughs> Thanks. Um, what were the resolution of the images and like what memory card did you use and how much space did it take up over the time? Um, it was a surprisingly small amount. I think it was only a couple of hundred mega, um, couple of hundred megabytes uh, because of the um, yeah, as in it was just a couple of hundred megabytes because I used the old camera module. About two weeks after I went on holiday, a new camera module came out and it's amazing. It's 1080p, it does video by default, so I'm going to definitely rebuild it into doing some sort of video time lapse of some sort. Um, yeah, it's just more of a suggestion. Um, so for about under a tenner, you can get these GPS modules that are serial, and that will give you time and GPS. So hmm. you could just hack it straight into the... Yeah, I mean, um, actually, I didn't actually explain the, the main problem I had with the RTC. So the issue with the RTC is, because it didn't understand what time it was, when it would turn off, then the next morning when I turn it back on, it will think that it was the morning of the day before, which meant it would start overwriting images from the day before that, because I named all the images, image one, image two, image three, so it thought it was a fine. Um, so the way I fix that is by running around internet cafes for the whole holiday, which was interesting. But yeah. Any, <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. Hi, thanks for the talk. Uh, did you at all look into uh, live streaming from the Raspberry Pi, the camera? Um, I could have. Uh, I'm not sure how you would do that because you'd need a pretty decent internet connection as well, especially if you're traveling. I mean, I, the purpose of this was to do traveling because I think having like a wearable camera day to day, it's pretty repetitive and mundane. But if you're going on holiday, it's definitely worth checking out. So I'm not, I haven't actually looked into live streaming at all. I'm not sure how you do that. What did airport security make of a backpack with wires running from it? <laughs> uh, I dismantled it into several different pieces. And I have a camera bag, so I put the Raspberry Pi in there and it was fine. I mean, the only iffy thing was just having a strap that was sewed into a backpack going around it and no one seemed to care, so that was fine. <laughs> I also shaved the day before. But yeah. <laughs> what size of battery were you carrying? 
Um, it was nothing fancy, just a regular Anker power charger. I think it was like 1600 milliamps, just perfectly standard. And it lasted about two days, but I was charging it overnight anyway, so there was no issue. Anything else? Uh, no. Uh, well, oh, there's oh, one at the back. Uh, quick question. Um, did any of your friends have like privacy concerns or were they all... I don't know. I haven't asked them yet. <laughs> 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 I'm pretty sure it's all unlisted. I can't remember. Hello. <laughs> hey, um, how the GPS worked out, what was your plan for, uh, I guess, mapping out your coordinates and syncing that with what you produce here? Um, I was hoping to have a like very long like vertical thing where... I wasn't sure because obviously it didn't happen, but um, as a minimum thing I did get uh, working was get the Raspberry Pi to take a picture and then in the EXIF data to save the, the location. And that, that was like good enough because I could figure, like that's future me's problem to figure out what to do with it. But what I was hoping to do is maybe one of those like long timelines, so as you scroll down you could see yourself moving around and maybe cluster on different places as well. But it, it's, it would be like a fantastic way of remembering a holiday, especially because I haven't done this much of a holiday in terms of doing four countries in five days and it all becomes one big blur. But going back to this, you can kind of remember every single moment, which is like personally really, like I'm really personally surprised this, you know, it works this way. Hmm? Um, really the question was what, what countries? <laughs> Budapest, Vienna, that oh, was it, Budapest, Slovakia, Vienna, it was four countries. It's in, the, yeah, it's in the Google Maps thing somewhere. There's a picture, some, oh wait, there we are, those places. So, Prague, Vienna, Slovakia, Budapest. <laughs> cool, anything else? Um, are you considering labeling the the pictures at all or the video so it could say the precise place where it was or which building it was or or something well, that's exactly what i was looking for, looking to do with gps so i could have used gps and then it wouldn't be too hard to kind of cluster on where was i in one location for half an hour and then manually need to go on google as in use the gps go on google maps and say right i was at that restaurant and exactly where i went um, and that would have been fantastic but obviously i didn't get around to doing that Okay. okay, right. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks. Um,